Hello and welcome to the 31st webinar in 12D's Industry Solutions webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. Our Industry Solutions webinars are designed to provide insights into overcoming challenges in an evolving industry in more effective and efficient ways. We'll keep running these webinars regularly and recording them for posting on our YouTube channel with links through our website. Our first 30 webinars from this Industry Solutions series, as well as 34 webinars from our training series, are available online if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way. We'll put some instructions on the screen. We'll answer as many as possible of those throughout the webinar. Today's webinar, Folder Structure Best Practices, will be presented by Tim Brooks who has been with 12D Solutions for over four years at, as the 12D Model and 12D Synergy Training Manager. Tim coordinates and writes 12D Model Training Manuals and writes the 12D Synergy Training Manuals. A civil designer with over 20 years of experience in the civil industry, both around Australia and in the UAE, Tim has worked on a variety of civil projects including motorways, highways, local roads, industrial and subdivision estates, car parks and rail projects. The smooth running of your project starts with the basics. In this webinar, we'll look at the fundamentals and benefits of an organized folder structure, as well as some pitfalls to look out for. We'll also show you some tips for you to consider the next time you have to set up or review your company's folder structure. Over to you, Tim. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, industry challenge, setting up your company folder structures. Australia currently ranks second highest in the world for Google searches on file and folder structures. I mean, this isn't the latest celebrity goss, like searches for Chris Hemsworth with his shirt off, but for something in Australia that gets between 60 and 100 searches a month, this tells us that people are looking for ideas or really just don't know where to start. This is important. Your company projects will not run smoothly without an appropriate folder structure to suit your needs. Some companies have extravagant folder structures. These can be too complex for users, therefore making it hard to locate your files and data. Some companies have them too basic. This can lead to a mess as the project grows. Let's have a look at some tips and ideas to consider in your folder structure and also some items to be careful of. Just note, this is focused on the architectural, engineering and construction environment. However, the basic principles can be applied anywhere. You can set up your folder structure in Windows Explorer or any other document management system. I'm going to be demonstrating this inside 12D Synergy, a document and data management system. When it comes to your folder structure, there are two levels of folder structures. Your folder tree structure, and your project or job folder structure. The folder tree structure is your main branches to the information that information or data that your users require. They are your top level folders. So let's go and have a look at an example. In this example, the tree is the top two levels of folders. You can see I have one named for the company, the Jacaranda Company. This can hold your company information, like financials, uh, other items like HR or staff information, and maybe even your company policies. Next, I have a library. I highly recommend this to hold all your company standards. We will revisit this one shortly. And then there is where your users will spend most of the time, and that is in areas where the data is kept. My basic examples here are projects and proposals. If you work on projects that are joint ventures with other companies, you may decide to have a folder for that too. But essentially, these folders are just header folders for your staff to locate where they need to go. And depending on what you use, what you see or can access can be dependent 
on set permissions. The project folder structure. The project or job folder structure is where most of your users' work is done. <coughs> Keep it focused and not complicated. Avoid duplicate folders. And again, what you see or have access to can depend on permissions set. Review your structure. Avoid redundant folders. Set a time, maybe every six or 12 months. Review your folder structures. Is there anything not being used? Get rid of them. Do you need something else instead? This should not just be a management reviewing either. Please include your technical leads. They will be more familiar with how certain areas of the folder structure is working. So let's go and have a look at an example here. I'm going to go into projects and have a look at my example Emu Park project. We'll skip over um, the task list, teams and forums. These are extra 12D synergy permissions, uh, features I should say. I also just want to clarify here that the names or how many folders there are is not the primary focus here. These will be totally up to you and what your company requirements are. Note the order. I've used the simple number prefix to order the folders in what I consider logical for the jobs. Otherwise, for example, project management would not be higher in the list than administration. Another way to bring certain folders to the top of the list, and if you have no concern what, uh, what order other folders are in is to use an underscore or space at the front of the folder, folder name. I'm not a fan of the space as it's not easily seen. Something else to consider is using underscores instead of spaces in the folder names. This may be of importance depending on software requirements. So let's have a look at a few of the uh, folder structure uh, examples here. First one I have is project management. This might hold the accounts, project briefs, uh, the quality information or variation reports. Again, this might hold sensitive information regarding the project. So it's limited to particular personnel. Administration. Uh, HR might hold uh, staff CVs for this project, uh, project letters, and of course, meeting minutes. Under engineering, everything to do with engineering on the project, reports, safety investigations, or your site investigation reports, and maybe even um, project related photos. Note that I never have a deep folder structure. <clears throat> Three levels at the most as a base, your staff may add more to suit at a post creation, but not only is it annoying to have to delve deep into folder structures every day, it can also add to file path characters, which can affect some softwares, for example, your Microsoft Word and Excel. Under that, we have the CAD folder. <coughs> this is not software. It stands for Computer Aided Drafting and Design. This is for all your technical data. The different software folders go below or under it. The correspondence folder, it keeps a record, it's important, it keeps a record of all your incoming and outgoing information, as well as any project related emails. If you have 12D Synergy, you can automatically link your emails to that folder. I mentioned avoiding duplicates if possible. For example, <clears throat> you can see the photos folder. One under engineering is fine. I don't need to put another one, say, underneath the CAD area. Multiples will confuse everyone. Duplicate items will get created because somebody won't look in the other folder and then they'll go and do the work again. Or because they don't know which one to put it in, they might even go and create another separate folder. 
And then you have three photos folders or four, you get the picture. It starts creating a mess. I mentioned having a company library before. This is a great location to store all your standard company items. These can include items like company logos, the office and CAD templates, the 12D model user libraries, and any other items. Keeping training material here so staff have a great reference location and maybe other things like safety information or other policies. Of course, right access to these areas may be restricted to the champions of each field and all others may only have read access. <clears throat> so let's go and have a look at uh, my library example here. As I just mentioned, uh, we have all those areas that hold things like our, our office templates. Um, we've got areas for our CAD standards and templates and of course our 12D model standards and user libraries, as well as any other important reference material. This is also a great place to keep your project or job templates. You can see I have another subfolder here called templates. These have all my empty folder structures ready to go. So when you create your next job, it is just drag and drop or create from existing project. You don't have to build it from scratch every time. These standard project templates, depending on what you are using, can hold standard documents or data, permissions can already be set up, etc. So when the new job or project is created, it's just go straight away. Here you can see my, my standard job template with all its empty folder structure ready to go, as well as I have one for a zone or area job template. When it comes to zones or areas, some projects can be divided up into these possible different construction stages. Using a different library project template, as I've just shown, to create a subfolder structure underneath your main project. This keeps all the data for that zone separate, but under the main project. Therefore, it is easy to reference the other zones in future when tying in. So if you're using Windows Explorer, it might look something like this. Your standard folder structure, followed by some subfolders for your different areas or zones. And then again, they have their different, their standard folder structure underneath them. In 12D Synergy, there are some visual differences with these blue or blue project or job folders. So if I wanted to create a new zone or area underneath my EMU Park job, it would do this. I would go new job. Now, 12D Synergy also has the extra power of attributes and for referencing into documents and other software. This makes items easy to update with a single point of reference. And in this case, I can also use an attribute to pick, pick which template to use. So for example, I go over here and I select the one that says zone area job. Then using these other attributes, I can name them and I can fill out the other relevant information as well. I'm not going to do all of them, just a couple here. <clears throat> Those attributes are also being used to name that, that folder or job. Hit the create, that's going to go and create my new um, sub area, close the editor down here and underneath that it's new standard folder list to suit. Naming rules can be an can be very important to complement your folder structure. <clears throat> it stops users creating a mess, creates easier referencing, it groups similar files together, allows for zones in naming if you require it, can also allow for options. You don't need a separate folder or project for options. I recommend avoid putting dates into file names. 
use superseded folders if you have to. 12D Synergy has uh, version control built in. So old versions can be recalled if necessary. So let's go and have a look at some examples of this. Now, first of all, I'm going to bring some uh, drawings into my drawing area. Now, in Windows Explorer, you can only document a naming convention and hope that your staff will obey them. In 12D Synergy, you can enforce the file naming rules. <clears throat> so in this case, the simple naming that I brought in doesn't comply to the file naming rule. So the file name builder has popped up and is going to name it appropriately. Now, in this case, it's going to be prefixed with a job number, but then there's a bunch of variables um, that I have to select from. They're predefined. So in this case, we're in the preliminary design, and they might be um, drainage plans. I'm going to use the, the end text here to number them. Again, if they're all the same, I could just use uh, apply to all variations. But I'm just using the free text here to renumber them. In version four, we could just add a counter. All right. Set those. Synergy asks for a history description, so I'm going to say new drainage plans. Now, in this case, an attribute's also been provided for the revision. So because it's brand new, I'm just going to add the first um, issue revision number on that, and I'm going to apply it to all instances. <clears throat> and now those drawings are going to get imported into Synergy. There we go, copy them in. And when it puts them in, it's now going to tell me that while well, well, that's what they were named. They have now been renamed to comply to my file naming rule. And in this case, it's just a simple job number followed by a status, followed by what type of drawing, followed by a counter. All right. You can see my naming rule here. It keeps like with like as well. So all the drainage plans stay together. The detail layout plans stay together, etc. Okay. You can also include in the naming rule an area for zones or options. Here in my 12D model projects, I have a simple naming convention. It has zones or areas locations included, and at the end of the 12D model project name is a possible reference for an option. So here you can see I've got DES for design projects, DRN for drainage projects, and SUR for survey projects, followed by a zone, 00 being the main area. If they were in zone one, it would be 01, et cetera. A small descriptor for what it is. And then on this project, you can see it has been named option one. So I have a main option and an option one. The only thing that is changed for an option is the file, or in this case, the 12D model project name. No layer or strings inside get named with the option. This allows for easy swapping. Should an option become the main preference, simple file renames or 12D, project, 12D model project renames. Again, how you structure or order your naming rules is totally up to you. Just keep in mind, keeping groups together, I highly recommend it. As a side note for the 12D Synergy users, uh, you have managed folders. If you have a collective of data that you require to work on together, instead of checking out and checking in individual files, you can check out an entire folder of data. This keeps working folder data together. Great for software that use this, like 2Flow, 
12D model, of course, uses this. Or maybe you just need a bunch of reference data together for, say, GIS software. You can add or delete files from the folder, and the changes will be recognized at check-in. Hopefully this is showing you some of the fundamentals for creating a company folder structure that is more efficient and easier to use. Thank you. Back to you, Lisa. Thanks, Tim. Um, we had, we've had a few questions through, but I think um, we might get back to people by email. Uh, there was just one, one comment um, questioning whether you ended up putting all of the DP plan together, with DP1 being in between the other top three. Is there, um, yeah, is, is that something you wanted to check on, on the presentation, or would you get back to that user by email? Oh, I just needed, a, just needed a refresh on the view, and that would be ordered together. Ah, perfect. So, yep, that's something for people to note. Wonderful. Thanks very much, and thanks to the audience for your other questions. We'll, um, yeah, we'll get back to everyone. Perfect. <laughs> we'll get back to everyone by email um, shortly. Our next industry solutions webinar will be Dynamic Culvert Designer on the 11th of April. So register for that one now if you haven't already, and keep an eye on our emails and social media channels for um, all our other great topics coming up. If you need to contact us in the meantime, we'll pop some contact details on the screen. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you everyone for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.